Peter, you have a very interesting background, uh, having worked both in advertising and equity trading. Let's talk about advertising first. What function does this industry serve in today's society? The best way to explain that is to look at the fact that our economy is based on consumption, and advertising is the arm of creating artificial demand. And without that arm, and it's so polluted, as you know, I, mean, I can't even imagine what the world would be like without advertising, but without that arm, you wouldn't have people aspiring to things that are highly irrational, abused by our social inclusion. When advertising presents something to the community that seems to be something that some people want, it spreads like a virus and then everybody wants it because it's an issue of social inclusion, which is a part of our biology because that's how we identify. We identify and define ourselves by how others see us and how we are included in the group. So it manipulates our most primal sense of humanity in order to sell things. And again, back to my original point, if you didn't have that arm in our consumption-based society since the Industrial Revolution, the economy would collapse. That's a very unique point to make because when you first start an economy of this nature, like in the agrarian society and then in the handicraft industry, you're meeting demand, right? That's the point, and that makes sense. But at some point, this kernel seed had to change because when you have such a highly efficient, productive society that we have now, at least in the technical sense, not in distribution sense because we have poverty and all that, at least in the technical sense of what we can create, the efficiency, abundance, you have to have demand created now. And that's, a, that's basically the, the kernel seed of one of the central flaws of market economics or capitalism that has come to fruition today. Not only destroying human psychology, but destroying the environment simultaneously because you have an insatiable culture that's been literally generated. And as I detail in my book in the National Association of Manufacturers, mid 20th century, they were actually arguing that that consumerism was the best defense against communism and totalitarianism. They were, this incredible PR campaign went on for, for, well, it still goes on, really, but it's echoes of the original intent to transform society into one that just wants to buy and consume. And then progress, of course, being defined by what we produce. More stuff we produce, the more you buy, the more you own. That must be progress now. 